back to more Sewing with Michelle. On this week, I've got so much to discuss with you. Many of you have asked about the little mini iron that I have been using in the videos. So I brought one in and I'm gonna show you and teach you everything about that iron. And also I'm gonna be showing you prairie points, how to make them, and I've got a project that I'll share too. So much to do this week. So let's get going on more Sewing with Michelle. So here we go. Let's talk about my favorite little iron here. This is the little steamer by Steam Fast. And um, oh my gosh, this little iron has just been so convenient, so easy, so reliable. And um, I've had one for years and I absolutely love it. Now, when I first started quilting, um, I would say maybe seriously, um, I would go to retreats, I would go to classes. I loved to meet up and craft with other people. So I loved going to where other people were quilting to and sit and having that um, camaraderie with everyone and sharing your love with other people is just one of the things that I love to do with any sort of crafting. Quilting is 100% the same. So I, when I first started going, I would take my big old iron and you know, that can be problematic. It's, um, it takes a while to cool down, it's larger, there's so many different things that go around with it. But when I saw this little mini iron, I grabbed one because I thought, okay, first off, when you're going to some place and you're quilting at a retreat or if you're going to classes, you don't always have the luxury of space. And space is one of those things when you're sewing, by the time you got your sewing machine on the table, you have your cutting mat, um, and you have all the supplies, it often doesn't leave a lot of room for um, an iron. So I love that this little compact iron, along with my wonderful wool pressing mats that I've gone through before, um, they're the perfect solution for that. I can take them, they take up a little bit of space, um, they're reliable, they're there, and it's just so convenient, and I love them. Now, I also use this one um, sometimes if I have, like for instance, um, foundation paper piecing, and I've got lots of little bits and pieces, and I have lots of area that I need to utilize to finish the project that I'm working on. I will pull out my little mini iron rather than using my big iron for the same reason, for space. I can put something down and because of the plate here, the sole of the iron is smaller, I can still get all the pressing done that I need to do, but I don't have the big iron that um, gets more in the way sometimes than needs to be. So love, love, love. I can't say enough good things about it. And that's why you've seen me use it so many times on More Sewing with Michelle. So let me show you some of the features. Now it has a, um, a non-stick sole on here and this gets really hot. It is not one of those little irons that you're gonna turn it on and it doesn't get to where you need it to be as far as heat. It has a temperature dial here and you can turn it all the way up just like any iron, all the way up to the hottest setting. But as I've said with you before, um, I try to keep mine down away from the wool setting anytime I'm pressing fabric because I don't want to scorch or burn my fabrics. So anyways, it's got that dial that turns so you can turn it on and turn it to wherever you need to be. But also, it is a steamer, like I said. So it has an opening here and you can add water. Now, if you love to steam um, your fabrics, it's the perfect solution. All you have to do is hit the steam button and it'll steam away. Personally, I try to stay away from steaming because I think sometimes it distorts the fabric, but everyone has their own preference and I'm not, I'm not telling you how to press, I'm just showing you that this little iron will do the job for you. So in the box, it comes with a little travel bag and also a cup so that you can fill your hole with water and that way you'll be able to steam away. Now, um, keep in mind, remember I said um, it comes with a little travel bag. I think this iron originally was created for people that travel. And it's the perfect solution if you are going on vacation and you want to give your little items a press. 
it fits perfectly in your suitcase. It's not going to take a bunch of room. So many pluses for this iron. Um, the variable temperatures, the on off is right there. It has a light that shows you when it's on and it gets hot pretty darn fast. So it is lightweight. It is compact. It is perfect for travel. And I tell you, I use mine all the time. So it is the Steam Fast Mini Iron. And I'm going to turn it on real quick and show you real quick demo. So I'm turning it on and I like to turn mine almost to full. And I'm just going to let it heat up a little bit here. So I am going to show you that um, I have it heated up now and um, I can't touch it. <laughs> Don't want to burn myself, but I want to show you where if you turn this iron on, it's going to heat up. And basically, you'll see when you first turn it on that this light here will show. When it gets to the desired temperature, then um, the light will go out. If you want to bump up that temperature, when you turn the dial, you'll see that it will come on again and it'll go off. And that's great to know because if you are, say, you want to um, just have a really light press for something and you start pressing it and you decide, nope. I need more heat. Turn it up. You can turn it up and then you'll know exactly when it's ready. So I've got a few fabrics here. Show you it's just super easy. It glides. It does the job. I'm telling you, this iron is a little workhorse. It will do everything that you need it to do as far as a full size iron and um, it gets the job done. And it's compact size and um, its abilities as far as steaming as well as the on off there it's just a plus plus and I love this iron and I highly recommend it so it's why I wanted to bring it in on more sewing with Michelle and um, I'm going to show you real quick when I turn that up you'll see that the light comes on so the light will come on and off when it gets to the heat setting that you want love this iron and um, I'm going to need to let it cool off so let's turn that off and little steamer you want to pick up one of these on more sewing with Michelle today and remember that we have a coupon code so don't forget when you purchase your iron so let's get going now on the prairie points so prairie points oh my golly they are one of my favorite little additives to add to the binding of the quilt or even in the sashing and they're just these little itty bitty triangles but the great thing about them is that they're folded and um, they're made to where it's kind of like a flap so you can have them that they're loose and I love that look I love having the texture of of the different fabrics but also they're going to be a little bit thicker and higher than the rest of the quilt and if they're loose, it just gives it a fun little whimsical attitude, attitude to your quilt that you can put in a sashing or in the binding area. Now, I am going to show you a little bit later um, a project that I'm working on. And I'm going to show you how I'm actually adding prairie points to the binding um, on a project that I'm going to get to show you. So first off, let me get back to the task at hand. And let me show you how easy and fun it is to make these prairie points. Now, prairie points start with just a square piece of fabric, like so. And basically, you're going to fold it so that there's no raw edges. And that's important because you don't want anything unraveling or coming undone in your finished quilt. So basically, there's two different ways that you can do a prairie point. Um, you can fold it in half. And then fold it in half again. And that way there's folds here, but there's no rough edges. The other way is um, you can fold it. This is just a little bit larger. The square in half and then fold those points to the center. Now the difference to that is that it gives a line down the center. And let me show you real quick how to do um, the regular prairie points. So you're going to fold it in half. Iron it. You want a nice crease on there. Notice I'm using my little steamer iron here. And then you're going to fold this again in half. 
making sure that the tips and everything line up. Now that is the basic prairie point. And those are the ones probably that I use the most. Every once in a while, I will revert to the different prairie point. This one that you'll see on the close-up camera where I have the points coming in. It all depends. And even if you have those points coming this way, you can always turn it to the other side so that it's flat. But there's two different ways to make it. And sometimes I like the little added element of having the line on the center of your prairie point. It all depends. There's no right or wrong way. But I've got some other fabrics. So you can see for the project I'm making, I've got a bunch, just a bunch of these prairie points that match. All different fabric colors um, that work with that potential quilt that I'm doing. So let me show you real quick how easy and fun it is to make them. So I'm basically just going to fold in half again. Use this little mini iron. Give it a nice quick press. Fold it in half one more time. And I'll show you. I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit there. And I turned up the heat on this iron, not because I, I know I told you that um, I don't like to scorch my fabric, but when I'm pressing multiple layers like this, it's easier if the iron is turned up just a little bit. So I'm going to continue pressing these prairie points. Now I've used them, like I said, on binding. One of the places that I love to make prairie points for is towards the center of a quilt so that it's in the sashing line. And you can put them wherever you want. I've added them on purses and bags that I've made, table runners, um, lots of different places that I like. I like that they're kind of a little bit whimsical and they have um, just a little bit more um, design element to them. Now I looked, because um, you guys have probably figured out, I tried to find out the history of Prairie Points as far as when um, they first started showing up and I couldn't find anything on them. So I have no history to share, but I know these little Prairie Points have been around a long, long time. So that's pretty much so it. You'll see, I'm gonna turn off my iron here. You'll see that I've made just a few here, but the Prairie Points in this close-up video you can have it where the fold is on the side, or you can have the folds with a line in the middle. It doesn't matter which prairie point you make. It all depends upon the size you have. And you can see that I've made different sizes here. So prairie points, if you haven't tried them yet, you're going to want to, especially when you see this fun little fast quilt that I made um, with just five inch blocks, a charm pack, and I made some prairie points, and let's get to that next. So I um, went ahead, I have all my little prairie points ready to go here, but look, I created, just with some five by fives from a charm pack, this just fun, simple quilt. And what I'm going to do is show you how to add the prairie points along the edge to make sure that they're centered and lined up. And then I'm going to show you the rest for this finished quilt that I'm going to have done today. So let's get close to a demo and I'm going to show you how to line up these prairie points. So you can see I have my quilt top laid out on the table. I've got some pins ready to go and I've got a long ruler. I love these quilter select rulers. So what you're going to do is, what I like to do is try to take my prairie points, lay them out, kind of display which ones I have going and what I have available. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the corner here and you can see that I have a point situated there and I'm going to simply butt it up to the end, take a pin and pin it down like so. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side here. Let me pull this one in a little bit so you can see. 
well, it's not quite working out the way I wanted it, but that's all right. So because it's yellow, I want to use a different color back there. So let's go with a green. So I'm going to take my prey point, line it up to the sides, and I will hold it up in a little bit and show you a close-up of those ends when I get done. So there we have the starting points on each corner. Now what I like to do is take a long ruler and I'm going to line that point up. And I kind of line the ruler and alignment all the way across that seam. And then what I simply do is take a prairie point like so. I will go about three inches from the last prairie point and I will pin. And then just picking a different fabric that'll show up on that background. Take another one. And you can see with the prairie points, they have these openings. So what I like to do is kind of tuck it in, go three inches away again, take it and then pin it down. And I will continue doing this all the way across. Let me go ahead and kick it up a notch here and get a little faster. So it's fun. Um, it's a fun thing to add, like I said, to sashings and borders. It just makes it add a little bit of whimsy color and a different, a different feel to it. Um, I also like, oh my gosh, me talking and trying to plan out something. It's working too well, but I like to have um, a different type of element on every quilt that I do. And I also like to kind of rotate. So I don't do prairie points all the time, but every once in a while I'll just literally go, okay, it's prairie point time. And I'll, I'll do um, a prairie point additive. It is, like I said, it's one of those things where a lot of people are like, I could never do that. But like I feel with most quilting things, Anyone can do anything. It's just a matter of learning the steps, taking your time, and going about it in a slow, um, slow way when you're just learning. And I'm continuing adding different colors as I go. I'm pinning those on. This pin is giving me a little bit of a problem. It's not behaving. I think it wants to be exiled. Okay, so now I'm down to the last ones. So I'm gonna move my ruler over and I'm gonna move this whole thing over so you can see a little bit better now. Let me get the ruler situated a little bit better. Okay, so now that's kind of in the center. So I'm gonna line up at this point at one and this point at one. So you can see that we have each of these points lined up. And now I'm gonna simply pull them back a little bit and bring in the other one. So I like to now go from this point, three inches this way. Once again, you can add it in. Now, if you forget to tuck in the other ones in the center, it really doesn't matter. It's all gonna be fine in the end. And now I have a few options, which I love. This is why I always end up with little bits and pieces when I'm done. So I have all of these fabrics and I kind of have to decide which way I want to go. I don't know. I'm thinking I like those ones there. So these ones will be saved for another quilt another day. So now what I'm going to do is split the difference. So I can't go all the way to three because if I go to three, then if I go here, then this one's shorter. So I'm just going to split the difference, move them a little bit closer and like so. And then I will go ahead and pin. And then I will pin that last one of the prairie points. So now I can show you, let me get these rulers out of the way. You can see the ends there. They're completely butted up right on the corners. And that's important because you're going to sew a little bit in, You do, but you don't want a bunch of it to get on the ends. And then this is what it's going to turn out looking like. The next step is I'm going to simply sew these down with just a scant little um, distance away from the side of the quilt. I'm going to get my machine up and I'm going to sew those together and then I'll get you back here in just a second. So I've had my machine ready to go 
and I'm going to just sew these prairie points on just a scant distance away from the end. Doesn't need to be perfect. There's going to be a stitch that kind of secures it all in the end. And um, I'm just doing a basting stitch. So I'm going to go ahead, drop. And like I said, just a scant distance away. You can see that I have that flap. I'm going to go ahead, stitch. Now it's going through lots of layers there. So you need to take your time when you do this. Because if you go too fast, you may get things a little bit jacked up. And if you need to, you can lift your foot, continue and go again. And sometimes I take my pins out as I go, sometimes I don't. It all depends, I guess, on how I feel that day. So I'm gonna pull that aside, push that down, and then make sure that everything is nice and secured. This one needs to be opened up, down. And I'll continue this as I go, and then I'll get your attention once again. So I finished sewing those prairie points on. I simply did a backing with some batting, and then I pinned the quilt on top of that right sides together. So let me go over the stuff that you need. So you're gonna need five by five charm packs for the actual blocks and the prairie points. And then you're gonna need your backing and your batting, now you can make this any size you want. It could be a table runner. I just opted by an eight by eight grid and then um, the prairie points on the outside. So it's all completely up to you. It's just a super fast and easy project to make. So I pinned all the way around. You can see that I have everything down right sides together. The next step I'm going to sew, I'm gonna sew um, a half inch away from the edge all the way around. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got it all sewn up all the way around. I have my stitches and I left an opening. So right here we have an opening so that I can turn it. But what I need to do is trim up those edges and you're gonna wanna cut the corners so that you don't have bulk that when we're turning it. So let me trim this up real quick. Now this is a perfect little gift um, that you can put together pretty quickly, um, definitely within a day. As long as you've got a little bit of time to do some sewing, you can do this cute little project and have ready for a gift the next day. So I'm just continuing to cut all the extra stuff away on the one side. And then when I get to the corner, like I said, you want to make sure that you cut all that bulk away. There. So let me hold it up so you can see. I've taken and I've cut that corner bit away, but I'm not cutting the seam where I've stitched. That we need to keep intact. So now we get to birth it. So that's where the fun part comes in. So let me find where my opening is now. Here it is. Put your hand in. And I like to go to the far corner first, grab it, pull it through, turn it. Now on this type of quilt, I like leaving a larger opening so that I can really get in there and get everything out and turned the way I like it. And then you can see the prairie points are showing. Now this is really cute. Um, if you were doing a dinosaur quilt or something, it would be really cute to have that on the spine. That's why these prairie points, they're so versatile and they just add a little bit of fun and whimsy. Okay, so I think I've got, well, one more corner I gotta kind of pop out. And the prairie points kind of help you do that. You can see, I just kind of pull them and pull to the edge. And now look at this. Look how cute. Look how cute the prairie points are with the fabric. So I, the next step is to 
kind of iron it flat. You can see how the prairie points stick up on the edge. And then I'm going to do a top stitch so that everything is nice and flat. Isn't that sweet though? Let me hold it up. It's kind of hard to tell with the prairie points there, but isn't it sweet? It's such a fun, fun and different way to do binding. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pressed, get it stitched, and I'll show you the finished product. One moment. So that's this episode of More Sewing with Michelle from Prairie Points and also the mini iron. You're going to want to pick it up at mores-sew.com or you can click on the link in the description where you can get your mini iron for all of your ironing needs. Also, I use my professional tool turner to pop out those corners of the quilt. And as promised, I have the quilt to show you. So I went ahead, did some ironing. I added deck, just straight line stitching around the edges to secure everything. But look how cute. Isn't that sweet having a different um, finished edge on your quilt? And this is just a fun little quilt to make. It literally didn't take me much time at all. If you had a day, you could finish it. It's just five by five squares. You can use your charm pack using them to make the prairie points as well as the blocks, adding your backing. And this actually could be a reversible quilt for a tabletop. It's a perfect size also as a baby quilt. So many things that you can do with it. But look how sweet, look how much fun. The elements of the prairie points add to this quilt. So I hope you've enjoyed this week of more sewing with Michelle. I look forward to our next time. And until then, happy sewing everyone. Bye-bye.